Good morning. We're going to start working on our first shape for the Fancy Cube. We're going to go into our folder called Fancy Cube. That way we can store all our information in here. This is our first one because I don't have any information in here yet. So I'm going to go Create, Document, and this one is going to be the front face of our Fancy Cube. If we take a look at the front face for the Fancy Cube, you'll notice it's a square, which is 225 by 225. It has two eyeballs coming out of it that are 0.5 in diameter, and they come out 0.75 sticking out. And then we have a mouth here, which is a shape of a square, and it is a 0.5 by 0.5 uh, square. So I'm going to come back here. I'm going to start a sketch on my front surface. I'll click it over to the front so I can see what I'm doing. Take the rectangle tool, start in the corner, and I'm going to draw my rectangle. I'm going to click anywhere. And now if I don't click anything else, I can type in 2.25, enter, and it automatically gives me that measurement there, what, that, what I typed in. And it knows after I hit enter that I want to put in this information. If I made a mistake and I click again over here, oops, I started making another rectangle. I'm going to come over here and turn the rectangle tool off. And you'll see that this height here hasn't been dimensioned. So I'm going to have to go back over here and dimension it, click on it, click again, 2.25. And there's my rectangle. Finish the sketch. We're going to extrude this rectangle. Let's change it to isometric so I can see what I'm doing. And I want the depth to be 0.25. I think it's 0.25. Let's go back and double check. Yes, the depth is going to be 0.25. So come over here, click check mark, and there it is. There's that front face. Okay, now we're going to make some eyeballs on it. I'm going to start on that face that we just created. Let me move it back to front so I can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to start with two circles. But before I do those circles, I want to make sure that they line up. So I'm going to draw me a line going across here. I don't want to be on the center point here. So I'm going to make sure I'm not on that center point and I'm going to draw my line going across. Now, I, it's 2.25. I don't care about the distance uh, going side to side, but I do care about how far it is from the top. So I'm going to click, dimension it from the top, and it's going to be 0.75 from the top. Turn off my dimension tool. Now I can come back in and grab my circles, and I'm going to put those two circles on this line. Again, when I put it down here, I don't want to be on that center point because that'll lock it in there, and that's not what I want to do. I want to be off to the side. So the first one I'm going to put here, and again, when I click it down, if I don't click anything else, I can put 0.5 and hit enter, and it will dimension it to 0.5. My second circle, put it down. It doesn't matter how big I make it. I'm going to say 0.5, and it'll dimension it to what it needs to be. Now, I do need to dimension the distance from the center of the circle to the edge of our square. And that's going to be 0.5 again. Put it over here to the edge of the square, 0.5. And that should give us a distance in the middle here. The distance between these two points should be 1.25. And if I come back over here and I look, yes, the distance between those two is 1.25. So, when I hit enter, you'll notice that it is a light or faded uh, opaque color here. And that's because it's a derived measurement. It can't change. If I type in a number or try to type in a number here, it's not going to let me because it only can be uh, 1.25 because these three numbers added together equal 2.25 and math only works one way. So I'm going to click on this and delete it and get rid of it there. That way it's not uh, being distracting. Okay, finish sketch, extrude. I'm gonna extrude the two circles. Let me put it back on isometric so I can see what I'm doing. Extrude the two circles. 
Now, the distance that I want these two to come out is going to be 0.75. When you look at the instructions, it comes out 0.75 out from the face. So 0.75, we click check, that looks pretty good. Now I need to come back in and put the mouth. So I'm going to come back, I'm going to choose this rectangle square as my front face. And now I'm going to use the square tool and I'm going to randomly draw me a square here. I don't care what it is, except that now I'm going to type in my numbers. 0.5, enter, 0.5, enter. And now those measurements are there. I need the distance between, uh, get my dimension tool and the distance from the edge of the little square to the edge of the big square. And this is going to be 0.875, enter. And what happened here is this 0.875 <laughs> plus 0.25, which is half of 0.5 is 0.25. When you add those together, that ends up being halfway through this square here, 1.125, because 2.25 divided by 2 is 1.125, 1 and 1 eighth. And so this plus this half of the 0.5 is 1.125. I know that's kind of convoluted, but the measurements work out. Okay, um, now we're going to take our dimension tool and we're going to go to the bottom and again to the bottom. And this needs to be 0.5. And now this cube has been dimensioned out. You'll notice it's in black. Everything's been dimensioned out. Green check mark. Now I'm going to extrude. Return it isometric so I can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to choose the square. But this time I don't want it to come as a additive extrusion, an added extrusion. I want it to be a removed extrusion so it makes a hole. Check. And there we go. That is our front face of this guy, of this fancy cube. Last thing I'd like you to do is I'd like you to give it some color. So I'm going to come over here and choose the color appearance panel. And then I can choose and panel the whole thing, edit the appearance, and I can choose a color. I don't care what color you choose it. You can choose whatever you want. Um, if you don't want to do the whole thing in one color, you can come back and we can add a face appearance. And now I can choose this piece and I want it to be yellow. And this one is going to be yellow and yellow. And so there I've changed just part of it. And if I want to do it again, I can add another appearance. I can come back and choose another face that I want to change the color on. It's up to you. You can do as many as you want. We'll click X here because I'm pretty happy with what that looks like. I'm going to get rid of that and it has, it's automatically saved because Onshape automatically saves all your work. So there you go. There's your front face. Good luck on it.